Okay, I had a dream when I was a little child. In my dream, I saw a big green grass. There, I was playing with uh, many other children, laughing, running, and rolling on the grass. When I saw their faces, they were not Koreans. They had different skin colors. They came from different nations, different countries. And in that dream, I was so happy. And after waking up, I thought it would be wonderful to meet children from all over the world someday. And as I grew up, it became a dream deep in my heart. And I studied German literature at university. And then my dream was to be an interpreter and live a wonderful global life. But it was not from God. I studied very hard, but there was no peace in my heart. And I thought there must be something more than this. Yeah. So in the summer of 1994, I participated in a mission conference in Seoul. There I heard stories of, of billions of people dying without knowing Jesus Christ. On the last night of the conference, there was a time of calling forth uh, those who want to be a missionary to stand up. Well, I thought missionary work is good and important, but that was not for me. But the very next moment, I found myself uh, uh, standing up. And tears began to flow from my eyes, and all my fears and anxieties about my future disappeared right away. And peace and conviction came flooded into my heart. Then deep in my heart, I heard the voice of the Lord. My beloved son, I am calling you to go to the nations and share my love. This is your destiny, and this is your calling. In 1995, I participated in an international missions conference in Germany. Uh, then, for the first time in my life, I worshiped with a thousand young people from all over the world. When we sang together, we sang verses in English, then we sang choruses in different languages, like French, Spanish, Italian, etc. And while, pra no. while praising God with a thousand people from different countries, I was moved to tears. Uh, it was like my childhood dream finally came true before my eyes. I thought this must be what heaven looks like. Countless people from every nation, culture, and language gather before God and praising Him in their native languages. And this has been God's dream since before creation. Revelation 7, 9 and 10. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So God's dream is to see billions of people who are saved since Adam from 240 nations and 20,000 people groups and 7,000 languages gathering together, praising and worshiping. So what do you think is worship? Now what do you think is mission? I think mission is all about dreaming God's dream. In 2003, my wife and I went on an outreach to India for three weeks. We went to Delhi and Varanasi. And in Varanasi, we went to the Ganges River. I can never forget what I saw there. There were many hin Hindu temples along the river, and people were taking a bath in the water. 
The river Ganges is considered to be a holy river. So Hindus believe that taking a bath in the river will remove their sins. It's also a place to die. So Hindus believe that dying in the Ganges will release you from the cycle of reincarnation and take you to heaven. So people burn dead bodies and sprinkle the remains in the river. But for the poor, peop poor people who have no money for crem crem cremation, uh, dead bodies are thrown into the river. In the evening, we saw a huge Hindu ceremony called Arti Puja. There were many altars where priests were burning incense to the goddess of Ganges River. Hundreds of people were there to see the ceremony. And then I felt like the city was in total darkness. I felt so hopeless and a desp uh, and a cry was coming from my heart. Can there be any hope to these people? These people are in complete darkness. They've been worshiping 300 millions of idols for thousands of years. Can these people be changed? But right there, right then, God put a dream in my heart. It was a dream of worship. It was a dream to see the Ganges River purified by the blood of Jesus. It was a dream to see many worshipers of one true God arise in India. And we went to India in 2006. We went there with two daughters. Uh, then they were seven and five. And we spent the first six years of our ministry raising up worshipers in Kolkata and East India. I taught in Calcutta Bible Seminary on worship and trained the chapel worship team. And we worshiped and prayed with young Christians in our prayer center. We also held a weekly worship gathering for young worshipers in Kolkata. And every summer we held a worship seminar for young Christians from different parts of India. As we traveled to different parts of India for worship seminars, uh, and gatherings. We met many Christians, many worshipers. And we worshiped everywhere. And we worshiped in streets, in churches, in schools, trains, and buses, on boats, on the Himalayan mountain, and Ganges River. In our second term in India, we mainly focus on training pastors and evangelists in God's word. There were people worshiping God in church, but bowing down to Hindu gods on their way home. It was because their faith was not rooted on the word of God. They desperately needed well-trained pastors and preachers. Uh, there was a lack of biblical and theological education. So we ran a training school for local pastors and evangelists and lay leaders. We taught them the Bible books from Genesis to Revelation. Then we had a time of preaching practice. Those graduates of our training school are now in different parts of West Bengal and bearing eternal fruits. Since 2018, we've been serving a local church in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, from the beginning of our ministry, we have been working with another missionary couples as a team. As we, as we researched unreached people groups in West Bengal, we found a fishing village called Ramganga. At that time, a lay brother was worshiping with children and teenagers in his house. 
By the grace of God, we built a church building in 2010. And now 13 years have passed. Last year, the lay brother uh, became a deacon and uh, uh, a teenager became a pastor of the church. They both are faithfully serving the church. And in 2018, church was established, another church was established uh, on an island 20 minutes away. And so the church below. The pastor and lay leaders go to the island Sunday afternoon and serve the church there. So it's never easy to live as a Christian in a Hindu society. They have, they have to pay a price to become a Christian and get baptized. So I hear stories of being abandoned by their family members because of their faith. So when we baptize young adults, we invite their Hindu parents. And whenever I saw them, I see them confessing that Jesus is the only way to salvation before their parents. I feel so proud of them. Uh, the government of India represents Hindu nationalism. They try to turn India into a Hindu nation. India is ranked as the 10th most persecuted country. So churches get burned down and pastors uh, pastors get beaten and abused, and every week there are 10 reports of violent attacks on churches and pastors on average. So the government is doing a campaign called Gar Wapasi, which means homecoming. They are trying to convert Muslims and Christians back to Hinduism. If they return to Hinduism, they get rewarded with a lot of money, which is very hard to resist. And due to Hindu nationalism, missionary work in India is getting more and more difficult. At the moment, in about 10 states, there is an anti-conversion law. Last year, a Korean missionary was arrested for trying to convert Hindus to Christianity. After months of imprisonment, she got released by the grace of God. Uh, since the Modi government, many missionaries got banned from entry to India or got their visas refused. And we also had difficulties regarding visas and entry for years. And whenever we face suspicious eyes of eyes and questions at the immigration. We felt like uh, we are independent activists standing before the Japanese police. Uh, I went to India in 2006 to serve there for the rest of my life. But I realized that the mission field is not wanting me anymore. And finally, our visa extension got refused. So we had to return to Korea. At first, we tried to move to Thailand. We started to learn the language and we were waiting for the pandemic to end so that we can go to Thailand. But one day, God gave us a heart for the migrants. He gave us his word, Deuteronomy 10, 19. Love the sojourner. Therefore, for you were uh, sojourners in the land of Egypt. And we got so excited just as when God first called us to missions. But our ministry in India has not come to an end. Uh, since COVID-19, I've been doing Zoom Bible class, and I've been visiting India once a year with a one-month 
e-visa for a Bible seminar. Our prayer for the church is to be a self-supporting church so we can gladly hand over everything to them. So in 1974, Leslie Newbegin, a British missionary, came home from India after almost 40 years of missionary, missionary work in India. He was shocked to see his hometown becoming a multicultural hidden society like India. And South Korea in the 2020s has become a multicultural society, just like Britain in the 1970s. People from the end of, ends of the earth are living next door to us. In a way, Korea has become a frontier area for global mission. So nowadays, the global mission strategy is changing from reaching every country and territory in the world to reaching every person in the world. Diaspora mission can be a blue ocean for the new era of global mission. There are 18 million Indian diasporas in different parts of the world. So there are great possibilities for reaching Indian diasporas in Korea and other countries. For example, it is, very, it is not easy for a Korean missionary to reach out to upper class people in India. But in Korea, most Indian students and IT professionals, they are from the upper class. If we share the gospel and make them disciples and send them back to India, they can make a difference in their country, in their society. I know Korean missionaries who are reaching Indian students in Korea. You know, the current prime minister of England is an Indian diaspora. And the CEOs of big companies like Google, Microsoft, and Twitter, they are also Indian diasporas. So Indian diasporas everywhere are making a global impact. In light of this, reaching Indian diaspora worldwide can be a very effective and fruitful ministry. Now I'm serving with Widi as a coordinator of MMTS, Migrant Mission Training School. It's a great joy to see lay people committing their lives to serve migrants in Korea. I believe diaspora mission is a great way to fulfill the Lausanne slogan. The whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world. There are 2.5 million migrants in Korea. Missionaries alone cannot reach out to them. Every believer should reach out to the migrants around them. They are the ones who can share the gospel with them, not only with words, but also with their character and their lifestyle. So my wife and I are also serving a Korean church uh, that supports us. We are trying to teach them and open their eyes to missions, especially diaspora missions. We had Bible reading class and missional perspective. We are planning to conduct a mission school for them. It's our prayer to serve migrants with them. So I just want us to get back to the Bible verses I shared in the beginning. Now I am in Korea, but I am still dreaming a dreaming of God, a dreaming, a dream of worship. One day people from every nation, people group, language, 
and culture will gather together before the throne of God and praising and worshiping God forever and ever. And since God is widening my ministry from India to the nations, so I want to share the gospel with migrants from all nations and raise them as worshipers. And I want to send them to the nations and see worshipers arise from all nations through them. This is a new dream of worship that God has given me. So I believe wherever we are, whatever we do, we are dreaming the same dream of God, the dream of worship. So I bless all of you to live as missionaries who live for God's glory. And one day, the world mission will be complete and the glory of God will fill the whole earth. On that day, we will see the glorious return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we will worship him with countless people from every nation, every tongue, every tribe, every culture, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Let's give a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much.